The news can be very worrisome. We can think of all the dangers that face us and face the people we love. Many of us have relatives who are at high risk. And then there's a larger picture of the, the economy, society. It's very easy to get overcome by worry. But being overcome by worry is not going to solve anything. As the Buddha said, worry is a hindrance. One of the obstacles we have to get over if we want to act skillfully in life. So one of the first things you have to remember is what's going to happen in the future has always been uncertain. We make plans, and sometimes the situation allows for those plans to come out as we hoped. Other times it doesn't. The times when it doesn't, what are you going to fall back on? Well, you fall back on the qualities of mind that you developed, the qualities of heart, the qualities of the character. And those are things we develop as we practice the Dharma. When you're facing uncertain situations, you need mindfulness to keep in mind what's important, what's not important, what's skillful, what's not. You need alertness to notice what has actually happened as the situation changes and becomes unexpected. You need ardency, the strength to keep on wanting to do things well. Well, those are precisely the qualities you develop as you meditate. And so when worries begin to eat away at your meditation, you have to remind yourself that meditation is actually a much better preparation for the future. We get the mind in the present moment, not only for the sake of the present moment, but also for the sake of the future. So we'll have good qualities, good habits that we can fall back on. So as you're mindful of the breath, you're getting ready for the future. As you're alert to the breath, as you're alert to what your mind is doing, you're getting ready for the future. And as you're ardent in trying to do this well, in other words, do it skillfully, that's getting ready for the future too. You want to train yourself not to be overcome by pain, not overcome by pleasure, what the Buddha calls being developed in body and developed in mind. And you do that by getting the mind into a good state of concentration. When you meet up with pains in the body, you're not chased away from the present moment. You stay here. You face them. And you have tools to deal with them. So that the pain doesn't scare you. You can breathe through the pain. You can breathe around the pain. If the pain doesn't change, you can focus on some other part of the body where you can get a sense of well-being. That way, even though there is pain, you're not overcome. The same with pleasure. Pleasure comes up as you get comfortable with the breath. And if you're not careful, you go wallowing in the pleasure, you forget the breath. And either the concentration disintegrates or you move into what's called delusion concentration where you're still, quiet, but you don't really know where you are. There's no alertness. There's no ardency. In that case, you've been overcome by the pleasure. The right course is when there's pleasure, you learn how to use it as a source of inner strength. You understand the causes that it comes from. In other words, your attention to the breath. And then you understand how to make the best use of it, spread it around. Learn how to breathe in a way that feels good, regardless of the situation in the body. And you have something you can fall back on. Because if you want to think straight, you want to have a sense of well-being inside. Otherwise the mind will be hungry, desperate. It will jump at anything. So again, in training the mind to be not overcome by pleasure, not overcome by pain. 
not only establishing something good here in the present moment, but you're doing this for the sake of the future. You will need these abilities when things get difficult, when unexpected things happen, when unfortunate things happen. You have something inside to fall back on as your inner resource. But it's also important that you have some discernment. And here the discernment comes in having a sense of priorities, realizing that everything we have in life we're going to have to lose, except for one thing that we don't have to lose. And that's the skillfulness of our actions. And fortunately, that's our most important, most important resource, most important treasure inside. The body will have to lose, our relatives will have to lose. Society will break down at some point whether it happens while we're alive or after we die. But if it doesn't break down before we die, the fact that we're dying means that society is not going to be much help at that point. What will be of help is the fact that we maintained our devotion to being skillful. And we see that as our top priority. The Buddha himself talks about this in his discussion of loss. He says there are five kinds of losses, loss of relatives, loss of wealth, loss of your health. And he says those things are not serious. They're going to happen at some point anyhow. There's a woman I knew in Thailand. She lived down near the monastery. And she started having dreams. These spirits wanted to use her as a medium. And she refused. This was in the dream. And they said, well, if you don't become our medium, your father's going to die, your mother's going to die. And even in the dream, she had the good sense to say, well, they're going to die someday anyhow. But being a medium is a miserable life. If you could guarantee that they will not die if I became a medium, that would be one thing. But they're going to die anyhow. And the spirits went away, left her alone. She had a clear sense of priorities, a clear sense of the fact that loss will have to happen, but you don't want to lose your, your good character out of fear of loss. There's a saying that's popular among the, the military in Thailand, that be willing to sacrifice your wealth for the sake of maintaining your body. Be willing to sacrifice parts of your body to save your life. And be willing to sacrifice your life in order to save your honor. Now, if we interpret the word honor here as being your willingness to do only what is good, or only what is skillful, and your unwillingness to do what is unskillful, is a good principle to keep in mind as a Dharma practitioner. Because of those five kinds of wealth, as I said, loss of relatives, loss of health, loss of wealth, they're unimportant. The ones that the Buddha said are important are loss of right view and loss of your virtue. Those are things you want to hold on to. And those are things that no one else has to take away. Those are things you do not have to lose, no matter how bad the situation gets. But you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. And as long as you can accept the fact that life will involve sacrifices, and you can keep in mind what's important, then you can keep your head in any situation. The concentration, the mindfulness, the alertness, the ardency are there to help keep you strong in those decisions. But the discernment is what's paramount. Here again, as I've said many times, discernment is a value judgment. You want to make sure that your values are in line with the fact that, yes, we do have to face loss in life. The people we love, if we don't go first, they'll go first. The things we love, again, they may leave us or we may leave them. But our virtue, our views, our right views, 
Those are things we don't have to give up. If we give them up, we've made a foolish choice, we've made a foolish trade. If we maintain them, they'll stay with us, they'll support us. There's a passage where, in the John Munn biography, where someone comes and asks a John Munn about the relationship between virtue and the mind. And John Munn says, you can't separate the two. If you could separate the two, there would be people who would sell their virtue. There would be people whose virtue could be stolen. And those are cases where people actually sacrifice the wrong things. But if you have the virtue, nobody can steal it from you. That's what they call a noble treasure. Something that supports you in this life and will support you as you go on to the next life. And can support you all the way to the point where you don't have to be reborn at all. So that's something you don't want to sacrifice. You have a clear notion of what is worth giving up for the sake of what. Then you have at the top of your list the things that you protect at all times, your right views, your virtue. Then you can face any danger. And although you may have to lose people who are dear to you, lose your health, maybe even lose your life. you still got something of permanent worth. And that you don't have to worry about. It will support you always.